then the moment happens. <laughs> I had this like thing I was gonna say in my mind. Hey, I love you. No, I love you. No, I love you. No, I love you. Oh, hey guys. <laughs> Welcome to today's vlog. We have some exciting things in store for you all in this vlog. We are gonna be telling you one of our favorite stories. By the title, you probably can already guess what it is. But we're gonna take you along with us today and just kinda show you what we're up to. We, again, are headed to Starbucks and we are gonna grab some coffee because I'm a caffeine addict. Oh, did I just say that? <laughs> Dang. Okay, I'm gonna get like a black coffee decaf because no caffeine. Also, be sure to subscribe to our channel because I have a little mini series coming out for the Whole30. I'm gonna kinda explain what it is, how I do things, recipes, meal planning, grocery hauls, that kind of thing is gonna be in the series. So be sure to subscribe to our channel so you can get a little bit more information about the Whole30. It's a super, super great reset. <sighs> well, we just went through the Starbucks drive through <laughs> Little Starbucks hack. If you order something, just tell them they messed up and then <laughs> order something else and you can get a free coffee out. Yeah, they did offer us a free coffee. Don't 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 actually do that. Don't actually do that. On purpose. On Unless purpose. it's an accident. Yes. Then you can take the free coffee. But uh, now we got ourselves a hot decaf coffee. It actually kinda sounds good in this weather, but anyways. Just thought I would uh, update y'all on my Starbucks order. Okay. So the hey babe, if you were a pirate, would you have the parrot on this shoulder or this shoulder? <laughs> Hello. It's recording? We are recording. Okay. So, it's story time. Story time with the Ables. Gather around, children. <laughs> so first off, we want you to guess who said I love you first. We'll give you three seconds. Who did it? Was it her? <laughs> Or was it me? <laughs> okay, so here is your answer. It was me. I was the first person who said I loved you in our relationship, and we're gonna tell you how that happened right now. If you didn't know, Connor and I were long distance basically for our whole relationship. We met in Tulsa where we're both from, but Connor was or is in the Marine Corps and so he lived here in California and so we were long distance the entire time and our relationship basically grew over the phone and FaceTime and text message. Yeah, first off, I just want to say our, I think our relationship grew a lot more authentically because a lot of our relationship was built through phone, through communication. There was a lot of like physical interaction which really helped us with accountability as far as like staying pure till marriage. All right, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna move forward with the story. It's a little sidebar. He was gone for six months. We became officially boyfriend and girlfriend like right before he left for his first appointment. And he hadn't said that he loved me yet. And it was crazy because then we had to go that full six months, talk on the phone, getting to know each other, and we hadn't said we loved each other yet. And we knew that we loved each other, like just through everything we, Felt it, but we just didn't say it yet. So when he got home from deployment in May, I remember he took me <laughs> to this uh, like rooftop type thing in this hotel and I knew he was about to say it. He was like getting teary eyed, gave the whole speech and then he didn't say it. <laughs> I think like the pizza man was, the pizza man had gotten there. I like ordered him a whole big pizza. And a little bit of a side note, he was kind of struggling with claustrophobia when he got home. And we'll probably touch on that more later. Um, but he had a, a really big struggle since he had been on a ship for three months, basically just rocking back and forth. He had a problem being in an enclosed room. And so um, the pizza man had gotten there and we went back to this enclosed room. And literally like right before then, I think he was like, getting out the nerve to, to tell me he loved me, but again, he didn't do it on that trip, so. <laughs> so I'll just give you my perspective on that. So, yeah, I just got back from deployment. I was feeling good. I was like, heck yeah, no more shit for a while. Um, I get to spend time with the girl I love, but she doesn't know it yet. I was trying to build up the courage. I was like, in my mind, I was like, just do it, just do it, just do it. And then she ordered my pizza and I fell even more in love. I was like, <laughs> okay, you just gotta, you just gotta pull the trigger. And I was like, I don't want to tell her I love her over eating pizza, so I'm going to try to do it before pizza. 
So, so we walked down the hallway from this room that she was staying at, and we went to this stairwell that kind of like overlooked the highway uh, in California, and it looked really beautiful and everything. And we had the whole eye locking moment. It was like super <laughs> intense, and I was like, okay, this is it, this is it. And then the pizza delivery guy texted her right before I got to say it. So. And in my mind, I'm like, wait, we don't have to, we don't have to go yet. Like, just do it. In my mind, and he didn't do it. We were awkwardly in the room. He was eating the pizza. I was sitting on the couch, and I knew that he was about to do it, but he didn't do it, and it was just kind of awkward. And we just kind of sat there in silence. I what the heck? We just went all this time without you saying it and you still haven't said it. What is wrong with you? And like through our text and like phone conversations, we'd always be like, I like you and doing the yeah. whole like lovey-dovey whatever thing. We didn't do it that time. Um, fast forward a little bit. She, she went back home to Oklahoma. At this point, um, after I got back from the deployment, you know, she waited for me and I was like, wow, that's, that's incredible. She waited six months for a guy that she was dating super long distance. We hardly got to communicate on deployment except through phone call, text messages. That meant so much to me. Um, okay, sorry about that. We had to change the battery pack. And we are back. Where did we leave off? I think it was, um, I was going back to Oklahoma. Okay, so through deployment, um, Madison had given me this journal that I had been writing in for times that we couldn't communicate on the phone, whether I had like no signal or she was off doing something. Uh, I could give it back to her after the deployment was over, fill her in on the blank spots of whenever we couldn't communicate. Basically, during this deployment, there was weeks at a time that we had no communication. Um, he was able to call from a phone on the ship, but the phones were monitored and there was always a line and we had to pay per minute. So it was always a super quick phone call. And this is the worst part, y'all. The first deployment, I missed pretty much every call. And I don't want you guys to think that she didn't try to call back. It was only a one-way call, so yeah. I can only call out. She can't call in because it's very uh, secured. And I would miss the call by like literally half a second sometimes. I'd be like running to the room and I would barely miss it. And it was, so there, there was probably like a month and a half where we did not talk at all. I just got voicemails and I would wail in my own tears. <laughs> <laughs> so, so picture like a dam filled with water that's like about to overflow. That was like us trying to say I love you but like hitting a wall and then it just breaks and we we're just yeah. <laughs> flooded with- Saying I love you all the time. People are probably looking at us like- yeah. Probably the, the same heck? way you're looking at this video, right? Yeah. <laughs> we drove downtown to Oklahoma. Um, we parked and I was just driving around looking and she was like, what, what was your mindset like whenever I was driving? I kind of I kind of knew that something was happening. I'm like, okay, he's not proposing, but <laughs> <laughs> but I kind of assumed that he was probably gonna tell me he loved me. And so Oklahoma downtown is very pretty. There's like buildings and you know like a lot of downtown places. I originally wanted to find a rooftop, but um, the next best thing that I had access to <laughs> was the top of a parking garage. Very romantic. <laughs> oh, so romantic. I don't care at this point. So we drive up to the top of this um, parking lot. It was the highest point I could get to in the city, legally. And um, <laughs> Do you remember that one time? <laughs> we end up going through this elevator to this parking garage and we're just kind of standing there. So we're just, so the elevator doors open, my heart's beating. We walk towards the side of the parking garage where you can kind of like overlook downtown Tulsa, which is actually very pretty. A yeah. lot of people probably think like Tulsa is a little uh, rednecky or Oklahoma country, blah, blah, blah. It's really not that bad. Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty awesome. Pretty, pretty awesome city. Pretty awesome, y'all. So we get to the side of the, the parking garage and then the moment happens. <laughs> I had this like thing I was gonna say in my mind. Let me tell you something about my husband. He is a man's man, but he can get really emotional and like quivery and like tear up and it's like the cutest thing ever. He was like tearing up and like holding my hand. I got a little bit teary eyed too. I like held her hand. It was like starting to get like very intense. I was looking into her eyes and everything. And I think she knew it was coming. She, she had like a big smile on her face, so it like made me feel a little bit more at ease. I said this little speech, I was like, 
Madison. Madison Ray Abel. Yes, that's right. I used her full name. Madison Ray Abel. Yeah, you were literally like, yeah. I would, I want to scream it from the rooftop, but I'm pretty sure you're like, I love you or something, and I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, she was stunned, but she ended up saying it back, and that just. It melted me hearing those words come from her mouth for the first time. Um, and afterwards, she confessed to me that she didn't want to tell me right then, but in the moment, it just felt so right. Yeah. That we just, it naturally came out. And from then, the floodgates happened. After I arrived in Oklahoma, after she went home, I was able to finally deliver this journal to her that I'd been writing in since we, like, very first started dating. Yeah. She had never read it up until this point, and, um... Her getting to read this now was basically me confessing my feelings to her and I posted a little tiny tag I don't know if you guys know what that is but it's basically a scan bar code that you can use on your phone it lets you play like music videos well I recorded a video for her and we'll play it in this video here so you guys can see that check it out so this is a journal that Connor um, wrote all of those little journal entries that I told you about I got him this journal before we were even officially dating so this is super special to me but just wanted to show you the video or the tiny tag I guess you could say that he um, did before he told me he loved me so I'm gonna scan it you literally just pull up this tiny tag app scan it he had already pre-made a video by scanning it himself and so I'm on the other side and I'm scanning it here for like the 18th time ever and a little video pops up. Alright, so, I've built this little mechanism. It is three strings tied together. You're probably asking yourself, why do you have three strings tied together? It's a good question. <clears throat> so, back in Tulsa, you asked if I could braid your hair. I didn't know how to do it. But, I attempted anyways, and I failed miserably. So since that day, I've set out to become the greatest hair braider in the world. Thankfully, through YouTube, I have a newfound skill. I call it the hair braid. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. Point is, it's a braid. I'm uh, gonna work on the French braid later, but I'm gonna need the back of your head, so we'll we'll work that piece out later. <sighs> Point is. I just want to take this opportunity to tell you that I love pursuing you, Madison. Even if it's through the little interactions that we've made through our conversations, I just love doing these things. Whether it be something that seems small, like a hair braid, or learning the difference between macro and micronutrients, I love learning these things for you. And I want me being in your life to make your life better. That's my goal every single day. And uh, I just want it to be like a testament to you and how much I care about you. Because I care about you so much and so deep, Madison. It's insane. Point is, there's going to be times where I don't know how to do something, like, like braid your hair. But if I don't know how to do something, I'm going to tell you I don't know. I guarantee you though, I can figure it out. I will figure it out. I don't, I don't care how I do it, I will figure out how to do that because I want your life to be easier because I'm in it. Whether it be something that I can pray for you in, whether it be something I can help you overcome, a goal that you wanna reach, I wanna help you achieve those things. And I wanna be able to bounce back and forth in our relationship and just continue to build each other up and we have done such an incredible job at doing that without even talking about these things. It's just natural and I love it. And it, gets, it just gets me so excited about the future and all the things that, that God has in store for us because this is just the beginning and I can't imagine, I can't imagine where God's gonna take us from here. And I, I know it's gonna be incredible and I cannot wait to share, share it all with you. I love you, Madison. I always will. What we have is unconditional. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And so that was just, for me, like the final, I don't know, just the, the icing on the cake 
Um, and just and boy, does she love icing on cake. Oh, I do. I do love myself, myself <laughs> some sweets. <laughs> yeah, we got engaged not that long afterwards. Yeah. Um, and we're married. So that's our love story. We have more stories coming for you. Um, we're gonna do a how we met story, which is also really, really crazy and interesting too. We're gonna do that here in a few weeks. But hope you guys enjoyed this, and we'll see you in the next clip. What? <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> vlog number 10, we did it. We are in the double digits. Bit. Vlog number 10! <laughs> If you liked this video, please hit the thumbs up. If you liked the way he told me he loved me, it was so cute. Hit the thumbs up. Also, keep leaving the comments and suggestions. We are listening. We got a suggestion to do a How We Met. We heard that one. We are working on it. We are working some other videos as well. So pay attention. <laughs> keep tuned in with us, and we are going to have some fun. Anyway, so that's our wrap for this video. Remember, you're always able. See you next time. Love y'all. Bye. Bye.